So in this video, we're going to talk about how to use LIDAR data that you can download from the internet uh, and bring that into ArcGIS and use 3D Analyst to measure uh, off of that LIDAR imagery. Um, you're probably going to use this in your watersheds class to do a stream cross section if, uh, if that's something you've been asked to do. And it's a, it's a really convenient tool and it's very easy to do uh, with just a few steps here. So where in Oregon, where we get our LIDAR data is from uh, Dogami, the, De the Department of Geology and uh, Mineral Industries. And that is, uh, if you just Google search that, D-O-G-A-M-I, LIDAR, it'll be your number one hit. And you're gonna come get to this web page here, essentially, or you can just you know copy down the URL. Um, you're gonna click on this explore and download LIDAR data, data, and that's going to take you to this link. So everything here in blue is LIDAR data that you can download Free, uh, because it's public domain. Um, most of the information that you're going to be concerned about is probably going to be this bare earth LIDAR hillshade. Um, that's, that's the kind of stuff that we're really looking for in natural resources because you want to know what the, what the ground looks like. Although, you know, you might be interested in these other layers like canopy height and so forth. So, you're going to then need to zoom in just using the zoom in or you know scroll in with your mouse wheel um, to an area that you're interested in uh, i'm i'm picking on a spot here um, out in in uh, east multiloma county that uh, most of you are probably doing a reforestation project um, on so this is that frank lumber company parcel uh, out here in in east multiloma county just off of the Donahue Road behind a large mountain environmental ed site there. And how I got that is, you know, just clicking on the base map here and similar to ArcGIS, you see this is all ESRI product stuff. Um, and I'm using this imagery with labels. So in order to download the data in Dogami, um, you need to have that downloadable layer data checked. So we're going to click on that and it's going to give us this blue box basically. So then all you have to do is hover over your site with uh, your mouse and you're gonna left click. When you left click, it's gonna select, basically these are broken into quadrangles. So we're on the Bridal Veil quadrangle um, and you're just gonna need to click on this link. Now you're gonna get a tremendous amount of information here. This is, it says, I like how it says large file. Um, it's not lying. Most of these are at least one gigabyte if, if not up to three gigabytes in size. So to download that, it, it might take you an hour or two, depending upon your internet speed. My house, I can't download it. It just is, it's just too darn slow. Um, if you're in the state of Washington, Washington LIDAR is in um, under DNR. Their site's a little bit easier to navigate, I would say. I'm not gonna go through it just because, uh, you know, most of you are probably not in there, but it's through this LIDAR portal. What's nice about it is, I'd say a little bit nicer than Nogami is that you don't have to download the entire quadrangle. You're going to just basically get an area of interest. So you don't have to go through that whole process of clipping or extract by mask if you want to make your LiDAR uh, layer smaller. Um, so that, that being said, uh, you can check that out through the LiDAR portal um, and, and just you know note that it's a little bit different. Once your data is downloaded, um, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna, I'll look at it here in just a minute, but uh, it's gonna be something like this. It's, it's pretty sizable. And uh, where we are here is just this uh, lower Columbia. So I have it open over in my catalog tree. You're basically gonna get this file for the Camus quadrangle and all of this information is gonna come with it. Um, so, I'm interested in this bare earth data. That's what we're looking at now. And I've just drugged this raster file over into, uh, into my uh, table of contents so that it's, it's viewable. 
I've done a little bit of changing to it already. And how I did that is to make it look more like a hill shade. And so what I did here is just right clicked on the layer. I went down to the properties of it and underneath our uh, symbology tab, I just used this uh, hill shade effect. So if I uncheck that and I click apply, and I'll just move my window out of the way. That's basically what you're gonna, you're gonna start with. It's not terribly helpful in terms of a background to a map. Um, so using that hill shade effect makes it a lot more user friendly, particularly when you're at, you know, like the campus size. Um, so we're just, we're just outside of Mount Hood uh, campus here. Of course, I just lost myself. So let me, uh, let me zoom back out here. I think I'm a little too far, too far north of it. Yeah. So north and north and too far to the, to the uh, west. So the, the campus here is in this spot. And so we'll just zoom into that. And most likely, I don't know where you're at um, in terms of doing a stream cross section, but you can see even at this layer uh, or at this level, it, it uh, is gonna be pretty decent data. Now, if you wanna go even more further on, because you know using that hill shade checkbox is not terribly great as well, mainly because the variation in uh, elevations here um, these are in feet, so these are the variations in elevation. So you could you could kind of mess with this color ramp, or you can actually use 3D Analyst to um, to convert this to a hill shade, and that's what I would highly recommend that you do. So you're going to want to go up to Customize, and then Extensions, and then you need to enable 3D Analyst. So make sure that that box is checked. From that, you're gonna go into our toolbox and we're gonna use, you can see that I've been here before, we're gonna use a 3D analyst tool, raster surface and hill shade. So that's gonna basically create a raster that will be in hill shade that is of your LiDAR base bare, bare earth layer, super helpful. But what it does that's very nice is it actually corrects this color ramp. So you don't have this really blown out white section over here contrasting with the gray. It, it'll fix it to where it'll look a lot more user friendly. Um, it, it doesn't make it so high a variation. So I'd recommend that you do that. It, it does take a little bit of time to run, so I'm not gonna run it at this point. The other thing that you may want to do is you may want to create your own contour lines. So you can do that. I generally use this tool right here, contour with barriers, and you can basically create whatever contour interval you want. So if you wanted one inch contour, contour lines, you, you could do that. Um, that's usually quite a bit of information. Five foot, 10 foot, those are probably adequate. I mean, think about that. That's that's usually like four times the amount of information um, that you're gonna, you're gonna get with a traditional uh, topographic map. So I would re recommend that you do that. Um, the other thing we're gonna do, but, but really what this whole video was about, not only just getting the data into um, ArcMap and actually finding where it actually located, it's, it's to take some measurements of like the channel. So you can, if you know where your, your uh, cross section was, like you had a GPS coordinate, you could bring that GPS coordinate in. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna guess and, and draw a line on there, but you could snap to that point and draw your line from it based upon, you know, an azimuth or whatever you, whatever you uh, actually did if you were gonna do it out in the field. The toolbar that you need though is this 3D Analyst toolbar. So this 3D Analyst toolbar that I have. So once we've enabled 3D Analyst, we're gonna go up to Customize, Toolbars, and we want to grab 3D Analyst. And that's gonna bring this toolbar up. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna dock it up there. Um, no, it, it'll, it'll automatically populate whatever raster that you have up. So I only have one, so it's going to pick on that raster. But if you have multiple ones in here, you make sure that you're selecting the correct one. The tool we're going to use is this interpolate line. So I'm going to zoom in just a tad here uh, to, you know, where, where the channel actually is. And it depends what you want. If you're going from this full bank 
up here at the top. I mean, probably not, but I mean, we, we can just for the heck of it. So we'll go from this, this top full bank. Uh, you know, we have kind of the, 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 this curve to where it's depositing over here. So we would expect that to look a little bit more like what it is in terms of um, a little bit more of fill. And so uh, it's definitely a, a lot less of a slope on this side, but we'll drag our line something across like that. So I'm gonna use this interpolate line. I'm just gonna start up here and left click, drag over to the top and then double left click to end your line. So it's going to give me a transect line, so to speak. And basically what I'm going to do is, is I'm, I'm going to slice through this and I want to see what that actual profile looks like. So up here at the end of our toolbar, profile graph is now enabled once we drew that line. I'm going to click on profile graph and it's going to generate what that cross-sectional profile looks like uh, for that line segment. These uh, measurements on our XY axis are measured in whatever your data frames in. So most of this data is flown in feet. Um, there, there may be some variation in that, but for most of the time, that's what I've run into. So the units all along our graph here are in feet. So this would be uh, feet elevation change. So this, these would actually be you know, 180 feet. And if you think about the campus, we're a little bit further down the campus towards Sandy River. Um, we're, we're pretty close to that 200 foot elevation above mean sea level. Uh, and you can see that it's pretty darn steep um, for our roughly 270 foot, uh, 260 foot contour uh, or, or a transect line. But I think that's probably what your watersheds class will require you to do is to generate something like this. Um, you, you're gonna have to use this, the, uh, the snipping tool or a screen capture or something like that to get this graph out of GIS. I've, I've never found a real easy way to do it. Um, and, and yeah, that basically is the, the premise of it. Um, if you make a mistake, you can you know, always close that. Once it's selected here, if I use my select element tool and just click off of it, my line just stays there and uh, remains, you know, in just so that you, you can see it. And you can always go back and grab that profile if you wanted to. You just got to select on it, right? So then I can go grab, create a new profile. But if you want to get rid of it off of your map, because you probably don't want to keep it there, or, or maybe you do, but if you don't, you just select it, hit delete on your keyboard, and it'll, it'll go away. So hopefully that will help you, um, you know, generate a cross-section transect line and, uh, and a cross-sectional profile of a stream using uh, some LiDAR data. It, it definitely won't be quick. It's gonna take you some time to download that, um, that bare earth raster. And then especially if you wanna use it as your base map, um, which is nice. It does make a really nice base map uh, for, your, for your final project. So hopefully that's, everything's good. If you have any questions, be sure to hit me up this week and uh, always stay psyched.